stunning news, news that could blow up Joe Biden's campaign to become US president, beat Donald Trump, but news that Twitter and Facebook have gone to astonishing lengths, frightening lengths, to stop you reading. And this is, in fact, two scandals in one. The New York Post says it has emails and photos that were left on the laptop of Hunter Biden, son of Joe Biden. Now, Hunter Biden allegedly left this laptop at a computer repair shop and never picked it up again. The guy at the shop, months later, found his keepers, gave copies of what he found to the FBI and to the Trump campaign. Now, the photos are one thing, proves authenticity, I guess. They're not just the family shots of Joe and Hunter and other relatives, but also of Hunter Biden in the bath and even in bed with what seems to be like a crack pipe. His father admits that uh, Hunter has had drug problems, but more seriously, more serious politically, are the emails. Now, Hunter Biden is not the kind of person with his drug record and business background or lack of that you would expect to be on the board of a big Ukrainian gas company. He's got no background in that stuff. Doesn't speak Ukrainian. But he was paid $50,000 a month, and some reports say $80,000 or even more, US, by a company called Burisma. That is a bit shady. That was being investigated, by the way, by Ukraine's chief prosecutor. And Burisma didn't like it. And Joe Biden, Hunter's dad, was conveniently then the vice president of the US and in charge of US-Ukraine policy. Now, Joe Biden has got very angry when people say, oh, Hunter, your son, he was being paid for access, obviously, to his dad. False, says Biden. Do you think it was wrong for him to take that position? No. Knowing that it was really because but, that but company it, wanted access to you. Well, that's not true. You're saying things you do not know what you're talking about. No one said that. Who said that? But, as the New York Post today reports, on Hunter's laptop, were also reportedly emails sent to Hunter by Burisma executives, like this one in May 2015, or April 2015, thanking Hunter for inviting me to DC and giving me the opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. Now, what might have been discussed at such a meeting? Well, a year earlier, Hunter was allegedly sent this email by Burisma also found on his laptop, um, complaining that the new authorities in Ukraine were quite aggressive to the Burisma boss to obtain cash from him. We urgently need your advice on how you could use your influence to convey a message or signal to stop this politically motivated action. Now, what influence did Hunter have? Well, funnily enough, his father, Joe, at the end of 2015, flew to Ukraine to give it an ultimatum. If he did not fire that prosecutor, it wasn't just harassing Burisma, by the way, but did have a reputation from other countries is no good, let's be fair. If they did not fire this prosecutor, then Biden would kill a $1 billion US loan guarantee it was after. And Joe Biden even bragged openly about what he'd done later. And I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got fired. So these emails, big story, right? And Donald Trump sure thought so. Hunter was being paid for access to his vice president father who was specifically put in charge of Ukraine and Russia. These emails show that Biden's repeated claim that he has never spoken to Hunter about his business dealings were a complete lie. Now, I should say, again, in fairness, that Biden's spokesman says, we have reviewed Joe Biden's official schedules from the time and no meeting, as alleged with the New York Post, ever took place, although we haven't heard from Biden himself to say whether... Some meeting was, you know, snuck in or whatever. He was certainly not going to put it in a schedule, I would have thought. Whatever. This is a big story. But when I tried to click on a link to Twitter, on Twitter to, to this story today, and I wouldn't have been the only one. Millions would have done the same. 
This is what I and others saw. Warning, this link may be, may be unsafe. The link you are trying to access has been identified by Twitter or our partners as being potentially spammy or unsafe. Unsafe. What rubbish. Unsafe to Joe Biden, maybe. I pushed on and this is what Twitter was trying to stop me and others from seeing. A story that was unsafe only for Joe and his son. But if you tried to retweet that story then, Twitter wouldn't let you. Your tweet could not be sent because Twitter said this link has been identified by Twitter or our partners being potentially harmful. And do you know Facebook did much the same? It put out a post. This story is eligible to be fact-checked by Facebook's third-party fact-checking partners. In the meantime, we are reducing its distribution on our platform. Now, the excuses that Twitter and Facebook gave for this political censorship, let's be honest about it, that's all it is, political censorship, changed during the day. Oh, look, uh, the link was unsafe. No, the material was stolen, these emails. Uh, no, no, actually, it was private information. It was, uh, it was false. Whatever. Look, it wasn't stolen. And when did Twitter and Facebook ever apply those same standards to protecting Donald Trump? Trump's tax records the other day were stolen and leaked. Twitter and Facebook didn't mind. No warnings there. No bans. No bans on retweeting. And for years, the media published, promoted, talked up a faked dossier that... Democrats have paid for that claim that Donald Trump had paid prostitutes in Russia to urinate on a bed, allegedly used by Barack Obama, and that he colluded with Russia to steal the election. Did you see any Twitter bans on that stuff? Twitter and Facebook, they're running a protection rack of Joe Biden and keeping news from you using their incredible market power. It is a disgrace and a threat to democracy. Joining me earlier was Annalise Nielsen. Sky News reporter. She's in Arizona at the moment. She's covering the US election campaign for us. Annalise Nielsen, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, where did these emails come from and how credible are they? Well, that's the big question. The New York Times has posted an explainer now that they've been censored, saying that they were on a laptop that was given to a technician by Hunter Biden, but then left there for more than 90 days and therefore abandoned. He then handed over these emails and the laptop itself. And that's the big question. He says he's handed it to investigators, but also Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's personal lawyer, who's now handed them on to the New York Times to make them public. So... They're saying it's been hacked, and that's why Twitter is saying that they've had to block the publication of this story. But the question is, could it be hacked if you've left it behind? And then that also goes counter to the Biden argument that they're not, they're not real. Yeah, well, I didn't notice the New York Times uh, or Twitter or Facebook having any trouble publishing uh, D Donald Trump's stolen tax records, but uh, different rules apply when it goes the other way, I guess. Um, the Biden campaign's response... Uh, I understand they've said that uh, they've gone through Joe Biden's uh, diaries and they can't see any record of a meeting with uh, this Burisma executive. But what has Joe Biden himself said? Has he come out and said anything personally? No, not yet. And you can bet that this will be asked of the presidential candidate, especially with these town halls tomorrow evening that are running simultaneously, the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign on what should have been the uh, second presidential debate night. But his campaign said, as you mentioned, that they haven't seen any record of this meeting, but they also haven't ruled out an informal meeting. And that goes to the crux of this entire story, the fact that Hunter Biden was taking money to be an advisor for this natural gas company in Ukraine, the connection to Joe Joe Biden leading Ukraine's, uh, the, the Ukrainian response through, for the White House in the Obama administration and then having previously been on the record saying he helped get rid of a prosecutor for corruption that at the same time was looking into Hunter Biden's company. You can't underestimate how much this will impact the election cycle. We can, we, I can't tell you how many people we've spoken to, especially Trump supporters, that say that they like Donald Trump because he's a businessman, he's not involved in politics. And the sense of using your political office for gain is going to impact those people who might be thinking about Joe Biden. But we know that Donald Trump hasn't exactly had the cleanest record either. And so it's just kind of going to turn a lot of people off from the entire process altogether. So uh, is Joe Biden's campaign, well, dare I say, given where you are, where you're standing, is it cactus if this is true? <laughs> 
No, it's not cactus at all. I think especially this year, so many people are voting early. These stories are really hard to gain momentum. What's really interesting is the censorship has now driven more of the coverage than it would have otherwise, really, because so many high-profile people have come out and said that you shouldn't be censoring this kind of journalism. As you very accurately say, we don't know where Donald Trump's tax returns came from, but he certainly didn't release them. So you can assume that something nef uh, so somewhat nefarious happened there, but good journalism happens when this information gets out. And so you need to give it the chance to be made public and let the public make their decisions on how important this is. And so mo it's going to play really awfully the, just the fact that they're trying to stop the American voter knowing what information matters to them. Oh, I think it's been a, shocker, a shocking look and their excuses for doing this. Facebook and Twitter keep changing. I mean, when I uh, wanted to click on the story initially, I was told that, you know, my computer could be at risk. I mean, it's just absolutely dreadful. I'm not allowed to pass on the story. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. It's so extraordinary. Uh, the polls, Annalise, say that Donald Trump's going to lose this election and, uh, it, you know, Joe Biden's got a huge advantage. I don't know, you know... I, I'm, I'm wary about uh, questioning polls too much, although they were so wrong last time. I have to say, though, Donald Trump's body language at his campaign rallies the last couple of days suggests that he reckons he's going to win it. Can you explain the signs that would give him that confidence? Well, I mean, you have to have confidence. If he starts to look like he's not confident, people are going to lose confidence in him, especially in a country like America where that kind of attitude really sells. But I can tell you, the time I've spent on the ground here, I think there's a few factors that are going to really make this much closer than people realise, and that's the attitude towards coronavirus. When we look at it from the outside, it looks like America's absolute chaos. But so many people here, it hasn't changed their day-to-day -day life. They're still working. They don't know anyone who's had it. They haven't had it themselves, and they're frustrated with the lockdowns, and so they want to see that open back up again. And you look at the map, and it looks awful, but when you go day-to-day -day and talk to people, most of them ask me to take my mask off so they can understand me. They don't care about distancing, that kind of thing. It's just a very different attitude. One of the really important questions we've been making sure we ask everyone is... Is your life better or worse than it was four years ago? And it's remarkable how many people still feel like their lives are better or at least the same. They don't personally feel like it got a lot worse. And I think one of the really deciding things here is going to be where suburban voters sit. You can really assume those people in the big cities are going to vote Democrat, rural areas lean Republican. It's those cities and that's where they've had the varying impact of coronavirus and also where women are still frustrated and I can tell you a lot of them are bringing up law and order with me. They're not bringing up even having Amy Coney Barrett sit there for days and talk about potentially overruling access to safe and legal terminations in this country and it hasn't factored into their decision making unless there's a real upswell of people, Democrats, getting their votes in if they just sit there and feel unenthusiastic. It could very well be a Trump victory.